We're up to another part of our conversation with John Anderson. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. And you and I, because I'm doing a thing on uh, Post to the Edge and uh, Fragile, and I've got a lot of journalists talking about it, but it'd be nice to have the guy who actually sang it talk about it. Yeah, And You and I was a song I started writing. Um, I don't know. Uh, all, all that I know at that time, Rick Wakeman was an orchestra of sound. Yeah. So I was very invested in uh, the idea of, uh, how was the song going? I can't remember the song. I should know. I don't, I don't think I can sing it. for. Hold on a second. I've got it right here. Oh, please. Just the verse. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. I hope you can hear it. By the way, you must look back at your career with awe. I mean, it's amazing the, the amount of music you guys have made. I mean, and you've gone in so many different directions. I mean, it must be gratifying for you. Yeah, you look back and think, uh, okay, I've got to get on with some more work. <laughs> I've got things to do, you know. But I'm so, at that point in my life now that I'm very blessed to have survived. And, uh, Can you hear this? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the key the key to that song was the the beautiful um, guitar sound that Steve had. A, I think it was a Portuguese guitar. Do, 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 do. So that time it was a, it was definitely a, a, the song carries the, the story. Coins and crosses never know their fruitless worth. One of my favorite lines, actually, coins and crosses, money and religion they don't, they don't know what they're they're useless actually but we're very spiritual beings you know so we all have our own religions should we say and uh, the confusion was that you, you can't have a religion saying you're all wrong you're all going to hell you can't have that it doesn't work the old religions are like that you see and um and you and i was always the the connection of and you and i being the the divine and you and i reach over you know or you and i my friend you and i we're always trying to figure it all out and then the idea of being able to turn around and say rick we need a, a solo like an orchestra theme idea but, uh, no, I don't remember exactly how it came. Maybe Steve wrote it or we all started playing it and the themes came. It was a very magical time where we, we were definitely as one, if you like, in the studio. And what you can do in an afternoon is yeah. amazing. You know? Was there a criteria with when you went into fra – almost done with you, I promise – uh, when oh, going, I'm fine. I'm fine. You can go on for another hour. I don't care. Uh, uh, going into Fragile and Close to the Edge, was there, uh, and even topographic, was there a, a, a mind, to, uh, was there a criteria going into those albums of going, okay, we were, we've done this, let's do this, but, or did you just follow your noses and write? No, I, I, I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I wasn't the leader but I was in charge of knowing what I wanted to do. And I just felt that Fragile, we had so much talent, you know. We actually did four songs. And I said, okay, we've done a long distance run around, bass solo, Chris Squire, bass solo, very rare, you know. Bass solo, brilliant. Steve did uh, the clap. I went downstairs in the studio and did a tell the moon to tell the march to tell dip, 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 basically what I do now. Uh, we have heaven and Rick did cans and Brahms, a little bit of Brahms. So the, that, was, that was the glue. The four songs was the main important thing. We had right about uh, Heart of the Sunrise um, and a couple of others. Being on King Crimson, vocals on the lizard. What was, uh, how, what what facilitated that? How did that happen? Well, it's funny that me and Chris went to see King Crimson. We were we're in a in in a speakeasy 
which is a club in, uh, in London, and uh, who's his band setting up? Who, who's the band? King Crimson. Oh, really? King Crimson. Never heard of him. And they, they were just amazing. They, were just, they played their whole first album, Court of the Crimson King, perfect. As though they'd just come out of the studio, which they had, and just hit it seriously. And uh, I, I looked at Chris and said, we gotta, we got to practice more because these guys are, are seriously good. And uh, a few months later, uh, Bob Fritt got in touch with me, wanted me to sing a song called Prince Rupert. And I said, okay, um, I'm very happy to do that. So I went to the studio and I had listened to the record demo, you know, so I started singing it as, as I would sing it sort of thing. And Bob comes over and he looks over his glasses and says, well, John, could, could you sing it just like the demo? Well, I could do <laughs> if you want. <laughs> so I sang it just like the demo, which is more straight in a way, where I'd started bending a little bit and... Uh, it's interesting that when I was a kid at school, uh, St. John's School in Accrington, where I was born, I would, I would go to school 15 minutes early to watch the trains go by the bridge right next to the school. And the trains would go right past underneath, like, because it was lower down. And every Wednesday, this train would come, this beautiful green train like with smoke it was like a steam train you know and it would come from far away you'd see it coming and it glisten in the sun it was green it was called prince rupert wow yeah. there you go eh yeah, um, it was a neighbor you call them namers they had names oh know. is that right Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. And buy a t-shirt, help support our channel. Link in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Mm -hmm.